Hey, Texas Values friends, Jonathan Sines here, president of Texas Values. Great to be with you on this opening day of the Texas legislative session. This is the beginning day of the 2021 Texas legislative session, numbered 87th Texas legislative session. I was trying to do the math myself. This is my ninth session, which means that's 18 years since, or, or close to, uh, since 2005 that I've been involved in this type of work. And so very excited to continue a legacy of protecting faith, family, and freedom. And I'm really excited that I'm not doing it by myself, nor have I for quite some time. But we've got several new members of our team. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But we're uh, one of the newest members of our team who's now leading our legislative effort uh, is no newbie to the tech capital. And so during this video, we're going to be talking with Director of Policy Jonathan Covey, who was in the Texas House Gallery during the opening ceremony today, Mary Elizabeth Castle, Policy Advisor for Texas Values, who was in the Senate. And then also we're going to let our newest member of our team, Greg McCarthy, peek in for just a minute, too, and talk about his first day working with us at the Texas Capitol. But, you know, look, a lot of fun the first day, a lot of things that happen. And sometimes there's a little bit more that happens in the Texas House, more members, election of a speaker and all that kind of stuff. And that certainly was true today. So let's start things off with Director of Policy, Jonathan Covey. You were there in the House Gallery and, you know, I mean, not a lot of uncertainty if you will about what was happening, but anytime there's a new speaker that's going to be elected, certainly a lot of uh, an increased interest and particularly with the coronavirus uh, rules and guidelines, so on. There's probably a lot of intrigue that members were just able to get to their desk, right, and yep. down to business. But they certainly uh, tell us a little bit what happened in the Texas House today. Yeah, absolutely, Jonathan. So um, it was a it was a shortened ceremony today. We had um, basically the House keeping everything down to just bare bare minimum uh, relating to the constitutional duty of officers. Um, but we did uh, have a couple things happen. Of course, right now security is really tight. Um, at the Capitol, we have a lot of DPS officers going um, here and there, but um, but we were able to get in. We sat in on the House Gallery. We were able to talk with a bunch of uh, members as they were coming in to the uh, entrance to the floor of the House, um, and, and it was just everybody was seemed to be really pumped up and really excited. Um, uh, and, and I'm doing a little share screen so people that are watching yeah. Facebook and, and you're watching. Uh, share this post, like it, uh, comment, and all those good things, because we're going to go on for a little bit of time here just to talk about the opening day of the legislative session. But Director Paul Covey was in the Texas House. I'm just showing to people watching on Facebook, this is the military, well, excuse me, the law enforcement DPS presence outside of the Capitol and one of the entrances. entrances. This is the north entrance, which is now yep. really the only entrance you can get into at the Capitol. You have to wear a mask, and if you didn't see it, uh, the um, uh, the reports that came out yesterday you have to get tested too, just to get into the Texas Capitol. You can see there that kind of yellowish tent there. Uh, here's a better picture of it too, so if people can see it. You've got to go through this tent area. I mean, tell us about that process, coming yeah. The yeah, I, I was in that tent. So uh, <laughs> I had to go through, they, they require you to go through uh, that tent and get tested uh, for COVID-19 in order to just to get into the main Capitol building. So you go in, you get tested, you wait your 15 minutes. And, and then I was able to get in. Um, but, uh, you know, like I was saying, the DPS officers are here. And um, I know that um, security was uh, was a was a concern going into the session and uh, show up in, they did so we, we 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 see them all over the capitol right now and um, but but you know I, I like those guys you know? they're great you know they're, they're, and I mean they're, sometimes they're gals too don't get me wrong I'm just saying I like their presence you know yeah no it, it gives you the sense that people are on edge sometimes there are people that are you know we've never had any incidents with our team at the Texas Capitol but sometimes people lose their cool and they're likely to do that when they're reminded that Texas Department of Public Safety troopers are there and they're going to make sure that they protect our capital and keep things safe while the rest yeah, of the are working on business. All right, so you got through that gauntlet, got in there, got in the House chamber, and then, uh, but some important business for the House to take care of today. 
Yeah, absolutely. So one of those uh, important things was uh, the nomination and election of a new Speaker of the House. And of course, um, we had um, only one nomination come in for the Speaker of the House, and that was Representative Dade Phelan from Beaumont, my old district. Um, and uh, he was nominated. We had uh, seconding motion speeches, and then he was elected um, almost, almost unanimously uh, to the Texas House. And so, um, you know, just um, I think that look, looking in on that and seeing the the support that uh, the speaker had, and, and the speaker, you know, he was very uh, he was very um, uh, coalescing when he got up. He gave a speech about you know talking about how Texas needs to come together. One of the things he said was, um, "We need to be there for our educators." He said, "We our educators are on the front lines. Our teachers are on the front lines of um, fighting, uh, and 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 they're they're exposed to COVID every day as well. So we need to be there for our educators." He said, "We need to be there for our small businesses." He talked about uh, embracing regulatory change uh, to ease up the burdens that are currently on our small businesses, our businesses throughout the state, and our state economy. Um, and he just brought a very unifying message, which I think was a good thing. Well, one of the things that I liked uh, was the message that came across from him and, and numerous speakers that, you know, look, there's some, there's a different environment, some different things to navigate, safety guidelines and so on, but we don't stop for anything. I mean, the right. state of Texas has a constitutional responsibility to pass a budget and to meet, and usually there are things that happen and we've got some important work to do and Texas has a great opportunity to lead. I think um, I'll talk to you about another speaker that came into that chamber in just a minute, but let's bring in Mary Elizabeth Castle. And this all happens simultaneously, okay? So you've got on one side of the Capitol, you've got the House chamber doing all their things, elected a speaker, everybody's taking their oath of office in the House and in the Senate, you've got Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, you've got members getting sworn in. Uh, you, you know, an election there too, not quite as, dramatic, if you will, uh, but certainly uh, noteworthy. You've got an election for a president pro tem. Uh, Mary Elizabeth, you went to that same gauntlet, you got into the Senate gallery, got tested, all that stuff. Um, everybody's, you know, masked up and social distance, but they did get down to business. Tell us a little bit about the Senate. Yeah, that's right. So a little bit of a different gauntlet, a shorter line to test for the Senate, but still all the, the same. The Senate's always like that though, right? They're right. always kind of you know, they think they're the, the well, I don't want to say it that way. There's this notion that they're kind of the upper chamber and, you know, a smaller group of people. So not a surprise to me that maybe the line was a little bit shorter. Yeah, yeah that's right. But still the same protocols and still the same atmosphere. They really wanted to keep things succinct and to the point. But it was a very good opening day ceremony with very encouraging words from the governor about wanting to keep our Texas economy strong, for wanting to keep Texans healthy, also, just very encouraging words, bipartisanship on our uh, President Pro Tem, uh, Senator Birdwell. Uh, it was great to hear so many good words about him, not just about how he is as a legislator, as someone who is a lawmaker, but also as a person of faith. And Democrats and Republicans alike just really admired him for his faith and how he shares that uh, in the Senate and how he lets that lead his life and the way he enacts laws and how he treats other people in the Senate. So it was just great to hear such good words. Uh, it seems like they're gonna meet again tomorrow, but gonna take a break for a while until January 26th. But it looks like they're ready to get some great work done in the Texas Senate. Well, we're talking with Mary Elizabeth Castle, policy advisor for Texas Valleys, other members of our team. And I've got a screen share here up, a photo of Senator Brian Birdwell being sworn in, if you will, and being recognized on the dice up there at the microphone in the Senate uh, when he was elected president pro tem. And, you know, Senator Birdwell, we've worked with for numerous years. I mean, the guy served our country and our military, really uh, survived a near death at the Pentagon at 9-11 when a plane crashed into the Pentagon. He was there, a lot written and talked about that. But he served uh, our country well and now our state. And so great to see him in that role. And that will have some significance um, and during the legislative process, not quite to the significance, if you will, in the role and the responsibilities, uh, is my understanding, as a Speaker of the House, but certainly noteworthy. And so, you know, and, and Governor Abbott did make an appearance at both chambers. Am I right? I know I saw him at the House, then he usually goes over to the Senate. 
And then I have a, um, I'll just do a screen share too. We had that when Governor Abbott came up to spoke and I'll go back to you, Covey. You know, I heard him and, and he'll do a state of the state speech. Usually. We'll see what they do. If any of that changes, I would imagine it doesn't. In a couple of weeks, he'll do a state of the state where he's center stage and gives quite a long speech. But uh, he did give a brief, some comments. One of the things I saw and heard him say was, boy, how important and, and really that America needs Texas to be strong. Yeah, absolutely, Jonathan. That was that was his primary message as he stood up before the House of Representatives. And you know, it was just really special to get to see them as uh, as they stood up and, and were administered the oath of office along with um, Representative Phelan when he took the speaker um, oath. But you know, I, I think that uh, Governor Abbott just wanted to uh, bring everyone together, and he was really pointing out that you know we have a state with with um, with special uh, with special things going on here. We have um, we're friendly to business, we're friendly uh, to uh, to life, and I think that we uh, have a lot to offer. And Governor Abbott is just saying, you know, uh, the country right now in this moment, when there are restrictions coming on churches, there are restrictions coming on religious organizations. Um, the the uh, the country really needs Texas, and we need to be that light and that shining star as we go forward in the 87th session. Well, look, and there's always a lot of nice talk. It's the first day of the session, and, and great. Let's start off that way. We can all start off as friends, and you know, yeah. across the aisle and by bipartisanship. But inevitably, there are things that members are going to disagree with each other about. And look, there's nothing wrong with that either. That's a part of the process. But it's great for everyone to come together because I do think there's a lot of tension, been a lot of tension leading up to this session. We weren't sure a week ago when the, the Capitol was going to open up. We haven't been there for so long. Our office is right there. And I just want to say that for a minute. Our office is two blocks from the state Capitol. Uh, we spent some time putting out information week and last week about what the requirements and guidelines were to come to the Capitol. Some of that changed yesterday evening, and we were still trying to update people with that information. Don't be discouraged about coming to the Capitol. And look, if you want to take safety precautions, if you're waiting to he get test results or you're quarantining or whatever reasons, maybe you're not as comfortable coming to the Capitol in certain time periods, we'll leave that up for you to decide. Uh, but they're trying to do it in a way that's safe. And it is important. The, uh, as my, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I believe that um, Attorney General Ken Paxton put out an Attorney General opinion with some discussion about how important it is and how it's constitutionally uh, protected and required for the process to be open, members to be at the Capitol voting, for the public to be able to part of the process. So even though there's been a lot of virtual legislative hearings, Zoom meetings by virtual voting, school board, stuff we've been involved in, Mary Elizabeth, you've done it, the State Board of Education, Covey, others, uh, I don't expect it to be that way at the state Capitol. We'll let you know if things change, but there's going to be a, a really a strong effort. We'll hear a discussion tomorrow about the rules in the Senate and the House and probably a little bit more on that uh, moving forward. But I imagine what you're going to see is a different environment that really tries to balance safety, but also allows for those in-person things to happen. Uh, that's why it's important for us to be as close to the Capitol we are. But if you want to come to the Capitol, get engaged with us. We want to help you do that and not be discouraged. Uh, but there are ways to, for you to connect remotely if that's what you're more comfortable with. Uh, we do have our Faith and Family Day coming up on March 17th. We're still trying to navigate how to do that because the, the Capitol has said they're not allowing any events at the Capitol. Usually we have something on the South Steps. We have a meeting room within the Capitol. Uh, but do not despair. We'll find a way to deal with it and to make sure that we get together on that day or, or, um, or another. But March 17th, mark your calendars for that. And, you know, look there, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with the rules. It could be very important. Um, and like I said, I haven't had a chance to go through Attorney General Paxson's opinion that came out today on that. But I just think that's more evidence that it might be a little more complicated or challenging to navigate some of these things at the Capitol this session. But there's probably a way to do it to where people can try to be as safe as they can. But the importance of being there in person and for things to be official so you don't have to wonder did technology fail? Did someone really press the button to vote for or against legislation? Uh, because look, Covey, Mary Elizabeth, y'all know this. There are some times where they take what's called a verification vote. You have to not only press the button to vote one way or another, you've got to be physically seated at your desk and counted for. It gets real serious. And so a lot of value 
but a trial run, not a trial run, I shouldn't say it that way, but the first time around this session for people to see what it was going to look like and how things were going to go at the Texas Capitol. Covey, I mean, look, you know, took you a little bit longer to get in. It's going to, you know, some other requirements. Uh, but, you know, look, I think we can get work done this way. Absolutely, Jonathan. Work will get done. And look, I just want to say for anyone who's contemplating coming to the Capitol or um, who thinks, you know, that it might be too much trouble. Look, um, I got tested in and out 15 minutes. You get this, uh, you get this handy dandy little green uh, bracelet to put on the, so that they know you're good. Everyone knows you're good. Uh, but it, it's really not, not that much trouble and it's, um, it's worthwhile for, for being safe, but just come out and be engaged, be engaged in your, uh, in, w with your representatives, with your senators, let them know what your issues are because uh, this is important and things that, uh, things that are important are uh, worth putting effort into. Well, there's no question. And so I wanna bring in, I wanna do two things before we wrap up too. I wanna talk about some of the issues that we talked, that we care about. Um, you know, there wasn't much said, if anything, about some of the issues we're specifically involved in, maybe some allusion to some of them. And, and, and I'm not trying to make an issue of that. That's probably not uncommon the first day, just trying to get in, get people sworn in. But I want to talk about some of those things. Uh, but I want to bring in, before we forget, Greg McCarthy. I think he's there with Mary Elizabeth and let him say hello. He's the uh, newest member of our policy team and uh, is going to be working in a policy position, going to be doing some communications work with us. Greg, how's it going today? There you go. You got muted, buddy. Go ahead. There we go. I tell you what, Jonathan, it is so exciting. It's so exciting just being here. Today is number one, the first day of our session. We got 139 to go, and I'm excited. The reason why is because we're here. We're here at the Capitol fighting for you. I want our supporters to know that we're here fighting for our values here at the Capitol. And one thing I'm really excited for is I am so sure that by the end of this session, we are going to have some legislation that's going to be fighting for our values, faith, family, and freedom. We want a pro-life. We want religious liberty. And I'm excited just to be here and a part of that process. Well, and I appreciate your flexibility because there's one thing that you, you'll need to thrive at the Texas Capitol and legislative process is being flexible because things change quickly as we learned yesterday evening. All of a sudden DPS came out and said, not only do you have to wear a mask, you gotta get tested before you come to the Capitol. Today. But nonetheless, we'll navigate those things. Greg, you've interned with us before, you worked with Senator Cruz, you've worked with other elected officials, and I'm excited about having you part of the team. And I'm real excited that you're one of the most recent graduates of the University of Texas getting your government degree like uh, myself. Uh, and so but we're excited about your enthusiasm. There you go. Come on. Uh, your energy. But, you know, and, and look, but it's important to have new people part of our team. We saw you when you interned with us, some of the things that you could do. And so we're looking forward to spending some good time with you. And not only you doing value for the work that we do, but also giving you some good training uh, for yourself. And look, if, if you're looking, folks that are look, uh, looking to intern, we're still got a couple of internship slots. You were an intern before. Did, was the experience valuable? Oh, absolutely. Invaluable. I tell you, when you come here, it gets you a new perspective and just to be a part of the process. Remember, this is a government by the people. And whenever we become a part of it, we can stand up and fight for our values. Our supporters, y'all are for faith, family, and freedom. And so become a part, get it, get engaged and fight for your values here at the Capitol. All right. Well, we're going to slide it back over to Mary Elizabeth. Uh, obviously, we did a, a good job uh, training Greg on how to deliver a 15 to 20 second sound bite. He'll continue that training. And it's important too, because that's sometimes all you get with some of our issues. Mary Elizabeth, you know, we're going to talk about and we're going to work on religious freedom. We're going to work on issues of pro-life. And you look, you know, I was on two interviews already today, KTRH in Houston, another one in North Houston. And that's what people are wondering. Um, going into this session, you know, particularly for the work that we do, uh, those needs, those needs of, and those were challenges for this past year, right? Um, and so let's talk a little bit about that. You know, some things that we know we've already discussed on religious liberty that we expect to see addressed this session. Yeah, that's right, Jonathan. This year or this past year, like never before, we've seen attack on religious freedom in our country. Uh, many churches were told they shouldn't open, and if they sh were to open, they had to have certain restrictions. They had to either not have singing or not 
wear masks or have disinfectant, a lot of infringement on religious liberty and how people can worship. Uh, so we're hoping to pass a law to make sure that people do not have that government infringement. I mean, that's the very first amendment that we have. Uh, it's essential that, you know, people can go to church, that they, they can feel free to worship how they want to, that they don't have to have police circling their parking lots for outdoor services, and they don't have to feel afraid about having indoor services as well, that people can have the freedom to gather with other believers, uh, whatever their religious freedom is, and that they can do that safely and have that right to. Well, and you know, these aren't hypotheticals either. I mean, there are cases, two at least, that have gone up to the U.S. Supreme Court already. Churches fighting just to stay open, to not be punished by the government uh, because they want to stay open. I mean, there's a study that's out, as a matter of fact, showing that during this year, goers have fared better for mental health purposes of dealing with this pandemic. I'm going to do a screen share real quick so people can see this on our website. You got to get our email. Here's the email sign up txvalues.org forward slash subscribe. Just put your email in or you can do the text alerts. Um, uh, you can text TX values to 797979. Put your information in here and you can help make a difference and stay engaged with the work that we're doing. I don't know what's going to happen with some of these, you know, social media platforms. If, you know, uh, our Facebook accounts and Twitter and all these things get shut down, you know, people are going to be concerned. Connect with us through our email. We send them out a couple times a week. Sometimes it gets a little bit busier when it's necessary for the session. But we're also going to be working on training. We're going to put together some virtual training. I'm going to go back to my screen share, too, so people can see this again. Some virtual training so you know how the legislative process works. Right, and so um, I go back to my screen share here too, and this is the uh, Texas House of Representatives website. So today you could have gone on here and looked at the video broadcast. You can watch from your home, right? As much as we'd love for you to be here, and we need you here as often as possible. If you can't be here and you wanna watch from your home and just follow along and be able to text or email or call your elected official, it's right here on the legislature's website. So video broadcast uh, that was shown and um, that was going on, Mary Elizabeth was in the House, Covey was in the Senate. They're watching it live, but there's also a live broadcast. So wherever you are, and sometimes that, that's what we do. We can't get into the gallery for whatever reasons because we're talking with members. We're looking, we're watching on our phone and doing that. But you can be doing that from your home as well. And I just want to show you all one other website. Uh, capital.texas.gov. They've changed the URL. This is where all the legislative stuff is here. Now we'll be putting up resources, lists of bills, action items, but sometimes you might want to check some of that on your own. Here's the legislature's website, capital.texas.gov. And you can um, take a look at that. You can sign up for emails so you can follow along with the process, but we're going to be putting a training together, at least a two-part training. So you can learn a little bit more about that and how you can get involved for these issues uh, Covey, I'm going to go back to you. You know, I was asked a little bit about the life issue. You know, last time, last session, there was a bill, uh, Born Alive Infant Protection Act, that's uh, a lot of Democrats would not even vote for. A lot more that we're hearing about the life issue taking center stage. The more we learn about how awful some of the things that are going on in the abortion movement, um, I, you know, and, and there are a few people that aren't back you know, um, that voted didn't support that legislation. The life issue just seems to get stronger, more people are involved. And I think that's, we're gonna see that play out during the session. Yeah, Jonathan, I think we are. Um, I know that pro-life issues are gonna take a, a, a big uh, stage on this particular session, but we're gonna be pushing those ourselves. You know, we've, uh, Faith, Family, and Freedom, uh, we, we, we focus on pro-life issues a lot too, but we're, we're, uh, we're helping to uh, work with the, uh, the heartbeat bill. Some of you may remember uh, House Bill 1500, which was from last session, Representative Briscoe King carried for us. Well, we're going to be bringing that back, um, talking about uh, finding a detectable heartbeat, and it kind of boils down to, you know, um, detecting a heartbeat, uh, requiring physicians to test for that and find that, and then protecting those unborn babies. And um, I think that um, uh, that issue, as well as some of the issues of 
of uh, reducing the demand for abortion um, as well are going to come uh, in, in a big way to uh, this particular session. And uh, we're looking forward to it and we're looking forward to being involved in all those conversations. Well, and it's hard to remind ourselves, there's still over 50,000 abortions performed in Texas every year. That's 50,000 unborn lives that are lost every year, you know? And so while that number's gone down a little bit, that's just such a, a strikingly low yes. number. And so that's an indication that there's still work to do to support and protect life. Hey, real quick, um, and some people may not realize this space, this area that you're in, uh, you know, those of us have been around the Capitol or anybody that's been there maybe, it's uh, called the outdoor, outside road. Yeah. Some people call it the re reverse rotunda. Yep. So you're out there able to get a fresh breath. We don't want people to think, you know, you're blatantly trying to test the right. limitations of the, the mask mandate, if you will. But there's a little outdoor area there. And it's really neat because it comes up from the extension, the underground area. You can see it from above on the north side of the Capitol where now you've got to enter. But it's a real neat area. And it's the area where we had our Save Chick-fil-A Religious Freedom Rally. Last session, Mary right. was with us on that. Oh my gosh, so many things that have happened around that area, but that are very important. And so, but at, at least, and it's sort of the smoking section. I don't know, I feel like you've got anyone out there smoking, but you can get a, a, a breath of fresh air. Doing uh, pretty good right now. <laughs> well, look, and you know your way around the Capitol. I mean, you worked in the House for Representative James White, you worked in the Senate for Senator Bob Hall. You got to know your way around, but you know, and, and the Capitol's got a lot of space in it. But usually, as I've learned, any place you can probably get to uh, running within ten minutes. But uh, not a lot, you know, some guidelines and rules, but not a whole lot that should be different. And we've right. been around there quite a bit, and um, you know, that's just a reminder for people to know how important it is for them to come out. But they're not going to be alone. We'll be there to shepherd them through the process. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be here. We'll be here. You know, we'll be here pretty much every day of session, uh, talking to legislators as well as uh, being on the ground floor, watching for issues to come up that we that we uh, don't want to gain traction. Uh, but right now, yeah, I'm like you said, Jonathan. I'm out in the uh, open air rotunda. This is a beautiful place. It's uh, it's a really it's it's, it's almost kind of like a hole in the ground, but it's really cool. You can kind of look up and you can see the sky, and it's very open and uh, everyone is socially distanced and safe. And I've, you know, I've got my uh, got my mask here in my pocket. So when I walk indoors again, I'm right back on. But uh, everything is safe. It's very good. Well, with that requirement, we might have to order some more of those masks that we have that someone, uh, I think a board member of ours gave us. It's got the come and take it message on one side. It's got our logo right. on the other side. Hey, look, if that's what you've got to do, um, you know, for in the meantime, it, use it creatively and artfully. But look, I know there's a lot of members still at the Capitol. There's some work for us to do. And so um, so we're going to cut things off in just a minute. But we want people to sign up for our email um, subscription so you can get that at least once a week, if not more. Uh, we'll have updates, you know, really throughout the session at the Capitol. We'll continue our weekly podcast and radio show on Fridays, the Texas Values Report. Uh, but a lot of information is going to start flowing from us quite quickly. So we want you to stay engaged. Those email alerts, those text alerts can be very helpful, but start making plans. Usually it's uh, the, the, you know, the busiest days are Monday through Wednesday, gets into Thursday and Friday during the session. So be thinking about when you can come down to the Capitol and uh, you might need to think a little bit more ahead of time um, to navigate some of these rules and guidelines, whatever the case may be. Look for March 17th, our Faith and Family Day. And also if you see value in our work, continue making or consider making a tax deductible donation today at txvalues.org. All right, so we're going to wrap it up. And look, it's not just the, the members of the team you see on the video, a lot of great members of our team that have been in and around the Capitol throughout the day uh, that do certain work with us, whether it's uh, reaching out to churches um, with Brian English and Pastor Tovar, people that are uh, taking care of our supporters like Joseph Walter is, and others, uh, Rosemary Graber doing a great job helping out with social media today. A lot of activity and it's not done. There's still a lot of people at the Capitol and a good time to say hello fo to folks and get reacquainted. So we're gonna wrap things up for this Facebook Live on Texas Values, but check out our website and our social media outlets. We'll have more updates soon on faith, family and freedom in Texas.